INEC declares Anambra elections inconclusive due to insecurity in Ihiala, local government area of the state. And Nigeria's Senator Aline Dume urges President Buhari to sign unexplained wealth order. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna The Anambra State Governorship election has been declared inconclusive by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The state returning officer for the election, Florence Obi, the vice chancellor of the University of Calabar, who made the declaration, added that this was because there was no election in Ihia local government area, which has over 148,000 registered voters. Now, INEC could not deploy voting materials to Ihiala during Saturday's election because of the security threat, she said. But so far, Charles Soludo, the All Progressive Grand Alliance APCA candidate, had won the elections in 18 out of the 21 local government areas of the state. Now, the supplementary election would be conducted in Ihiala come Tuesday, November 9. Well, joining us to discuss the events in Anambra so far is Law Mefo. He is a public affairs analyst and legal practitioner. Um, we also have Vince Onyekwelu. He's a, a national security consultant and risk strategist. And we also have Achike Chude, who is a political analyst. And he was an observer uh, during the elections. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you for hosting us. Mm. Thank you. Well, yeah, I'm going to start with you, Achike, because you were an observer and you were part of the Situation Room. Now, you have been in Anambra before the elections and, um, of course, after the elections. Uh, let's start by looking at the trouble spot, Iyala. Um, as opposed to what everybody thought, um, you know, the elections went smoothly, um, no violence. People came out and casted their votes. Aside from the fact that the beavers were not working, what else did you observe? Yeah, well, I mean, it was, uh, look, what, had, what happened, we don't know exactly um, uh, what happened the very fa uh, first time, uh, that is uh, following the election on Saturday, uh, that uh, ensured that uh, Ihiala was not part of uh, the voting process. Of course, there are all kinds of issues, a little bit of... Uh, uh, disturbance. They were told that uh, the military fired some shots or whatever. I mean, uh, the reality is that uh, event election eventually did not uh, take place in Ehiala. It took place the following day, and then it followed the same pattern that we have seen in other parts of uh, the state. That is a peaceful um, election. Uh, obviously, uh, Anambra and Nambria, so in the Anambra, we are we are, we are desirous of uh, having a free and fair election, an election that was not uh, characterized by um, any form of uh, violence and disturbance. And then, you know, they, they, it was a moment to be proud of uh, the people of uh, Anambra State. They stood to be counted, you know, and uh, in as much as uh, we are all aware that uh, the, the, the turnout was not uh, fantastic, it has never been. In fact, uh, Anambra State has been quite notorious for not uh, having very large turnouts during uh, the election, uh, during elections in the state. Uh, so this followed another pattern. But what made it actually worse uh, was the uh, pre-election uh, state of uh, insecurity and apprehension and tension that characterized the events leading to the election. You know, so, I mean, it is good that uh, uh, the election really has, has been uh, concluded. So we now wait for the final, uh, you know, definitive uh, statement uh, by INEC uh, as to the winner of uh, that uh, process. Achike, there are people who actually um, think that this turnout was great because they really didn't expect people to come up based on the fact that they were afraid uh, of what could have happened. And of course, with the loads of security, remember, uh, there was a cry by governors uh, uh, of the southeast about the militarization of Anambra. Uh, and so when you say that, you know, the turnout was not so great. In this regard, wouldn't you say that this was even better than you expected? So, well, well the, 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 in the context of the events leading to the election, it was not bad. In fact, I had predicted uh, to somebody uh, while I was in um, 
I think to a media to to a to, to a media organization while I was in um, Anambra State during the election, I had predicted that if we had anything like from twelve to fifteen percent of a uh, turnout, that that would be fair to me. That would be okay. And uh, since we are having a usually low turnout of around eighteen twenty two you know, 24% of the voters in Anambra say so. With the extraordinary peculiar situation uh, leading to the election, I think the turnout, I would agree with you, was fairly reasonable, at least on that basis alone. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, Vince, you, uh, you were in the field. I did see you on election day, and you queried some of the security um, handling of situation in the country, uh, in the state, I beg your pardon. Um, I, I, I did remember saying that, I repeated it over and over again, that many people were calling me, lots of people were sending me messages and saying, oh, I have to be safe, why am I not wearing a bulletproof vest, etc., etc. And this is the feel uh, that people were getting from outside the state. But when I got to the state, it was pretty calm. But you did say that, well, I, haven't, I hadn't been there for a long time, so I did not necessarily understand what was going on in Anambra. Paint a picture for us. The picture of what you saw in Anambra was not the real events. It was not the real sides and um, views of Anambra. I've been here permanently for over two and a half months physically. And I can assure you that Anambra was pretty dirty. Anambra was pretty dangerous. I don't want to paint a picture that would scare people. So what you saw in the, uh, for that, the two days you were in Anambra, a couple of days, was not the real situation that would be seen in Anambra. In Anambra, you don't step out anymore in the night. You, you totally stay indoors. What you saw in Anambra on Friday was silent, deserted streets. It wasn't for a joke. The funny thing about the presence of the security agencies, yes, it helped to have uh, the organized security agencies on ground. But, however, most people of Anambra origin actually see the security agencies not as friends, but they see them as enemies. I don't know where they got that state of mind, but they see the security agencies as oppressors in one way. They see them as people that they have tagged to be involved in extrajudicial killings. So when, when you saw in Anambra where people left Anambra, a lot of people even had to go to Enugu State. A lot of people left for Delta, for Asaba, just to stay out of the picture. So personally, I know that Anambra has been very poorly when it comes to the issue of uh, election apathy. But what we saw on Saturday was actually more people stayed away totally. and. I met you in Amobi, for example, and I told you Amobi just a stone throw to the governor's lodge, to the DSS headquarters, to the command, police command headquarters, to all the whole headquarters in, in Alka. But you saw the numbers. And obviously, Anambra is still dangerous. I've seen killings in Anambra that I don't even want to paint a picture. Because if I tell you about people that will shoot straight to the head, they don't even shoot to the body again, just in case if you have some kind of talisman. They shoot straight to the head. And until they see the, the brain marrows on the floor, they will not let go. Anambra was pretty nasty. The what, course, do you, what, what do you think, as a security person, was, re was responsible for what you're describing? Because I might, I might never understand what, what you're saying, because I didn't see it, I didn't experience it. Um, but I also remember that... For, for, from Thursday, people were literally just peeping through their windows, not necessarily moving about as they would want to. But why do you think that Anambra became such a hotbed? Because before the Anambra elections, what we heard more of was emo state. How did it move to Anambra and become so heated that this, what you're describing, seems to be the order of the day before the elections? Uh, obviously, to be honest to you, most of us that have been on ground have an idea of what is wrong in Anambra State. What is Anambra it? State wasn't actually so obviously let, let me land. I will not be able to tell you in totality the reason because I have to think about my own personal safety and security also. All right. So you have to forgive me. I can't say it, but the government of the day, the people in power know what's going on at the motor parks. I'll leave it that way. They know what's up, but I cannot say more than that. I have to think about my family life and my security too. So I don't want to delve into areas that you don't have any security to provide for me. But the people in power know what's going on in Anambra State. They know what the, 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 the war of the kids. They know what's going on. They cannot pretend they don't know 
Because when people die in Anambra, even the media do not even carry anymore because the media don't want to tell people how dangerous Anambra was. And if the media don't carry it, you would not know what's going on. So if somebody is killed in Mbuku or somebody is killed in Agwaka, if the media don't carry it, you will never know that it happened. But except you're a local, you know what happened last night. You know when it, 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 people are shot in the presence of their own mother that gave birth to them. Sitting next to their, to their mother, and the guys will come and bring them down. So if the media, if the media announce it, you will not know. But we that are locals feel. But obviously, I won't come out in the public and start telling you what is going on because I have to take care of my life also, and so I have to look after myself too. I'm also very curious. Uh, are these Anambar Anambarians killing themselves, or do you think that these are outsiders coming to perpetrate acts of violence against the people of Anambra? I'm trying to understand because, again, um, IPOB has been put on the chopping board here because of all of the unrest that has been experienced in a number of states. Again, um, not to try to put you on the spot, but who do you think are the people who are responsible for what's happening? In response, to the best of my knowledge, IPOB has nothing. They have nothing to do with the killings in a number of states. Totally, they have nothing to do with it. I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong. But I can tell you that IPOP has nothing. They are not involved in the killings in Anambra State. The people in power know what is happening in Anambra State. IPOP has got nothing to do with it. I could be wrong, but based on my own physical experience here, it has nothing to do with IPOP. IPOP are totally innocent with the killings in Anambra State. Totally innocent. All right. Uh, let me come to Dr. Mefo. Um, you obviously are have been watching things from the outside in, because I'm not sure that you're from a number of states. Um, but, but you must have had a, a bird's eye view of what's happening, not just in a number, but in the southeast. And now, um, INEC has shifted elections from Sunday until Tuesday. Of course, we're trying to make, they're trying to make sure that the results are properly put together. And then, of course, the winner um, announced. Um, do you see INEC being able to conduct that election in Ikeala based on all the information that you've heard uh, as to what's happening there? Thank you. Um, first, I, I am from Anambra State, oh, and um, I'm also politically active, oh, very, okay. very active. Are you still you in know, Anambra? So, no, I have returned to Abuja, but uh -huh. I know I know a lot about uh, my state. Great. And... Um, I have followed the gubernatorial election. I have followed it from, um, you know, from the beginning to this very moment. And uh, I think um, I have a fair view of um, what is going on, what uh, has transpired, and um, what um, uh, would happen tomorrow, if tomorrow comes. Um, on the whole, I think we should um, commend the Anambrarians, commend uh, the security operatives, commend INEC, you know, for being able to pull uh, this through. Because uh, the build-up to the election um, didn't really inspire much uh, confidence. Nobody uh, knew the uh, election would even hold in the first place. So for it to come and um, go, I think it's something quite commendable. Um, I, I believe um, it could be better, but, but given the circumstances, uh, I think uh, um, it's, uh, it's good enough what we have so far. Anambra is made up of uh, 21 local governments, and um, election has uh, been concluded in, uh, in 20. You know, Urumba North, maybe if, if some pockets of it, then... Um, Somewhere, I think, in Oguaru and the Demile North, you still have uh, a few places where runoff may be warranted. But in here, particularly, the reason we are given, I think, is plausible. The reason is that uh, INEC didn't have sufficient manpower to be able to mobilize to site. Remember, we had the reports from the media uh, telling us that um, INEC ad hoc staff were resigning. And uh, it turned out to be true. Yes, you know, if um, you followed through also, in a, a polling um, in a polling uh, unit, you know, you need to have an average of the four, four INEC. Um, 
officials? But, um, we, we, we had them um, on the average two in uh, the Anambra election. That will show you that uh, manpower was really in short supply. But, 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 but that could also, but, but then, could, they, 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 I'm they, sorry, they, Dr. Law, could that um, also not be tied to the fact that maybe the parents and guardians of these people who were supposed to be working as ad hoc staff uh, did not sign waiver forms or were uh, afraid of what was happening in Anambra and that's why they didn't let them show up? Now, of course, there are reasons for it. If, uh, if uh, your child is a copper, I'm sure you wouldn't uh, want uh, the child uh, to, to, to volunteer, given uh, the way Anambra was uh, unraveling at that moment. So your reason is uh, not uh, unconnected. It's likely uh, people were pulling uh, out uh, their children from uh, the firing line. You, know, you don't allow your relation uh, you know, to insert you know, his or herself in a in hands way for any reason. So obviously, they, you know, those ad hoc staff may have been prevailed upon by their families to really pull out. But whatever the reason is, evidently, many of them pulled out and they affected the Ihiala. So tomorrow, we need to have um, uh, Ihiala uh, come uh, into the picture. This will enable INEC to fulfill all the, the constitutional uh, and other extant regulatory um, provisions because uh, you ought to hold the uh, elections. And um, where elections cannot hold, you can ignore only on one condition, where the margin of win by uh, the, the person coming, topping, topping uh, the, the list uh, and the person following him, the, the, the difference between uh, their scores must be larger than uh, the registered number of voters. Mm. And um, you know that uh, Soludo scored um, 103,000, and um, uh, Paolo Zibo of the PDP scored uh, 52,000. So separating them is about um, about uh, 51, you know, 51,000 uh, votes. So what that means is that uh, uh, since we have up to 124,000, I think, registered voters in a half. That is greater than uh, the margin of victory of uh, Chukuma Soluto. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you go on and declare Soluto winner, you are assuming that um, uh, he has uh, won Ihiala or that uh, those who uh, registered in Ihiala to vote do not count. The constitution mm -hmm. will not allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we are facing at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the decision of uh, Professor Florence Obi, you know, the collating and the returning officer, for Anambra state election, it, 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 you know, her decision is perfectly in order. And uh, waiting till tomorrow to uh, fulfill that constitutional uh, requirement will not be um, too much uh, to really um, uh, sacrifice. Okay. It's a constitutional requirement. Okay. But I do not expect anything to change because even you check the 20 uh, local governments already declared, you will see that um, the average uh, percentage turnout of voters per local government, none of them exceeded 10%. So if uh, you go on the same average for Ihiala, even if you double it to 20%, that will still give you less than 20,000 uh, voters that will come out in Ihiala. But the election so still have to hold. even if Sobudu does not score a single vote tomorrow, you know, uh, and Paolo uh, Zibu, uh, takes the entire 20,000 votes that will come in tomorrow, it will still be about 30,000 uh, uh, votes short mm. of uh, the margin already uh, okay. uh, uh, already uh, secured by Soluto. All right. So what is uh, going to happen tomorrow is not really to decide who will be the governor. Soluto is the governor-elect. Well, no well, that well, well, we cannot... We cannot, we cannot the I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dr. Mefo, we cannot jump the gun. That, uh, no, 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 that's not our place. Um, to, to say we would allow INEC to do the declaration, make sure that they count the votes, and then declare whoever emerges as the governor. But it's not our place. We can only um, make assumptions. But I, I want to quickly come to you, Achike. Um, one thing that was uh, worthy of note during the elections was that um, we saw a lot, of, a lot more women show up uh, in Anambra, both young, old, physically impaired. They all showed up. Um, against all odds, one would have thought that the women would have sat indoors and allowed the men to, um, you know, come out, knowing that if anything were to happen, 
they would be able to take care of themselves. But we saw more women coming out. Now, I also want to raise something quickly because you are an observer before I go back to Vince. Um, now, before the suspension of um, collation of results, um, before Einek uh, talked about the Ihiala situation, um, there was um, issue, uh, issues around Olumba Nos, where uh, an official said he was forced to sign uh, election results. Now, a committee um, was set up quickly by INEC to review the dispute um, in Orumba North. Um, do you see that being done and dusted before tomorrow? We, I mean, the, the, the latest uh, report I had was that uh, the matter had been resolved and that uh, uh, that particular uh, local government, uh, the votes there had been incorporated. I mean, that was the, the report I, 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 I read. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, so many things happen uh, in an election. A lot of things some of us do not know. And uh, such a, a meeting at the collision center is a place where uh, people are, are free to actually ventilate their grievances. As we do hope that uh, answers uh, can be provided. And so um, I, I believe that since the committee next set up a committee to look into it, no other person is empowered to do that. Uh, so I think that that um, is, is, by the way, these are some of the things that happen. We do not expect uh, perfection in the electoral process. We only see glitches and glitches here and there. And then uh, you talked about uh, the uh, participation of women, which is uh, which was actually very commendable. A lot of them came out. But then, why would, would the women stay back and uh, allow the men uh, to come and uh, exercise their own franchise? I mean, democracy is all about um, everybody. It's all about uh, the those people who are of age, uh, who also have a stake uh, to protect. And uh, the, the, the women obviously felt that they had the stake to protect. And uh, they, they rightfully came out. And it's not just the women too. We also saw uh, the, uh, some disabled. Obviously, INEC did, did, uh, did a lot in that direction because the report we had from the field, uh, from our people on the field, was that um, adequate infrastructure was put in place. Uh, you know, for uh, the vulnerable and uh, for the disabled. In fact, you know, uh, pre pregnant women were given expedited uh, response by INEC. They were allowed to vote. Uh, the aged were also allowed to vote. And the other people that were also uh, disabled we were given expedited uh, access uh, to uh, to the voting point. So I think that uh, some of uh, these, uh, this, uh, you know, issues were, you know, very commendable. Of course, uh, we... We, we talked about, I mean, there was the issue of security. I, 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 somehow, I think it was mentioned in the course of this discussion. Uh, I, I was impressed. I can tell you, not, not just myself, a lot of us from the suicide situation room we were quite impressed with the way the security forces, soldiers, the policemen, conducted themselves. Uh, maybe contrary to, to the impression people had had all this while, uh, perhaps there was a special kind of reaction that, uh, that the, the, the police and the security forces were mandated to show during the election. But whichever way, it was quite commendable. They, they treated uh, um, uh, you know, observers and with a lot of respect and courtesy. And even uh, those people who were uh, in the queue were also respected too. And I think that this is what we want to see going forward. Okay. And finally, Vince, uh, I'm coming to you because of the issue of insecurity. Now, you've said that what's happening in... Uh, the state is known to all, especially those in power. Now, of course, the reason why we're having this conversation is because there was um, elections in Anambra and, you know, insecurity was a front burner issue because you cannot have uh, an election if you have a state that is, you know, um, facing some form of insecurity. Now, the elections have come. They will soon be over tomorrow. And, of course, uh, life continues. But as a security person, what would you be proposing that the government of the day do to put an end to this insecurity because it, it seems that it, it goes beyond the election in itself. It could be much more than that meets the eye. Two things I would suggest. Okay, so the, the government of the day, the current government, I'm not sure they have the capacity to do anything much. Rather, I will hope that a new government that will come in place will be a no-nonsense government that will honestly and holistically call a spade a spade. 
because I believe that he will get the intelligence, the information about what's going on in Anambra State about insecurity. I think, honestly, it's not difficult for him to take a stand if he wants to take a stand. And that thing I, sh I think we should do in Anambra State, because I'm still in Anambra State, I've not left Anambra State yet. And I think we have to be very careful our statements. We don't have to make inciting statements that will make somebody to feel like, oh, you a loser, you a winner, or oh, I won, or oh, you lost. I think we need to come together now and ask Media Anambra to move our dear state forward, what we call the spirit of Anambra, the state we love. We need to come together and not stop talking about you lost, I won, da, 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 da. Let's talk about how to move forward. Let the best man win, and the best man should serve everybody in Anambra State because we want Anambra State to be better. Security-wise, we want our daughters to come back home and do their traditional marriages. We want, we want to have our sons to come back home and do their young festival. We don't want people to be shot dead as if it's in Nollywood. Because if you see things that happened along Udoka Expressway, the Inugwan Expressway in the past month, it's like in Nollywood, it's like what you see in Hollywood. We don't want to see that. And I also want the media to be honest in their correspondence. They should not hide information about crime. That way people can have the true picture. But what you saw on Saturday, if you're just a stranger, that is not the Anambra we know. But most have come and they've gone back to their stations. We are still here. We need to protect the state. We need okay. peace. Everybody should come on board and know that killing is not the best way for us. We want everybody to come together so we can build a beautiful state, the state we love. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, let me just say, let me just briefly say this. You know, he says that, uh, yes, what, you know, uh, we saw on Saturday is not the Anambra we know. Fine, but it is the Anambra we want to know. It is the Anambra that we want to see. It is the Anambra, you know, that uh, that is that is peaceful. Because, and in fact, this is the Anambra we have always known. Anambra has always been a peaceful place. The whole of the Southeast has always been a very peaceful place, except, you know, for the activities of maybe the past six months or the past one year and all that. So that is the Anambra. That is, that is what the Igbo man has always been known for. He has okay. always been a peaceful person, whether in the Southeast or whether he's outside of the Southeast. Okay. That has been his forte, his, his greatest strength, that he's a peacemaker, he's a builder, he's not a troublemaker, you okay. know, and that is what we expect. But All again, right. we, you know, in order not to take your time, we also know that the problem of insecurity does not lie within the domain of the Southeast or the or, or Anambra State. It is a national political issue that should be addressed as such. I would really love to take you up on this, Chike, but I'll, I'll move to Dr. Mefo uh, because of time. I was, I've, I've been in Enugu and the state seems to be very peaceful. They've not even recorded any case of, uh, you know, either IPOB or whatever uprising. They seem to be living in, you know, paradise, if, for want of a better word. Dr. Mefford, this this is for you. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want the question. You talked about living in Enugu and the space peaceful. So. No, 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 no. I, I was just I was just re responding to Achike, but I, I'm talking to you now because I want you to give us your last uh, words before we wrap up. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I should give my my last take. Right? Yes, your final take. Yes. My 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 last line is this. You see. Um, Anambra is a great uh, state and a uh, very exemplary state. And um, we are in not for some uh, hiccups. Um, yesterday's um, election would have been the best ever in Nigeria. The um, electronic uh, voting machine failed, you know, uh, generally, and uh, it caused a, a lot of um, delay. And uh, it disenfranchised a lot of people also. Uh, that, 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 that left a sour taste on our mouth, and the INEC has to do something about that uh, moving forward in Ehiala and, uh, of course, in other places in the country. Right. And uh, again, I want to uh, still commend uh, the security operatives. They need to um, put an ice on uh, that cake tomorrow by remaining professional the way they have uh, been all through this exercise. And uh, finally, I would uh, want to um, advise um, the contestants in this election, 18 uh, governorship candidates. They are all winners, if you ask me. You know, participating and coming this far is a level of win already. Okay. Whoever eventually okay. emerges tomorrow, whether it is Soluto or somebody else emerges, 
we should all uh, put their uh, hands together and uh, ensure that uh, the state is rebuilt and um, uh, uh, and uh, we have uh, the, the better Anambra. The Anambra has always been an exemplary state. All right. Let us not forget, Anambra is the gateway to the east. If we don't get it right in, in Anambra, the rest of the southeast may be struggling because of All Anambra. Right. So I let us that. be aware of these um, contemporary uh, uh, historical responsibility placed on us All by right. nature. Right. We have to go. Mefo Law, uh, Vince Onyekwelu and Achike Chude, thank you so much for being part of this conversation. We look forward to tomorrow and the results that will come out of it. Thank you. All right, thank you all for staying with us. We'll come on with Plus Politics in a few minutes talking about the Senate wanting President Buhari to order people to disclose the source of their wealth. So we'll take a short break now and when we come back, more.